Hey folks, welcome back to Face Off Season 12. Divide and Conquer. I have a lot to talk about this episode because the end of it made me pissed off. And we'll get into that. But first we have to talk about the challenge and everything else because that comes before it. So let's get started. As I predicted from last week, uh, it was a very tough challenge where both teams had to pick one out of four doors where I'll reveal a picture of a fairy tale theme like house and make a family of three based off of it. Um, before we, they got started, there was a tiny little twist since Twisted Six only had four members and the Ethereal Effects had six. Uh, the judges decided to send Joseph from Ethereal Effects onto Twisted Six so there would be an even five and five, which is fine by me. But also means we got a little bit of more of a game changer that the judges can now decide which contestants could go on to which team if one team has smaller numbers. So that's saying something. So, and this week they also picked the foremans. Ethereal Effects picked Susan and Twisted Six picked Nick. And they both opened doors. Susan picked a door with a wooden little tiny treehouse type setting. And Nick opened a door that had a house literally made out of flowers. Like, lots and lots and lots of flowers. So it was interesting. Uh, all of them had their different challenges and their mistakes. Oh dear god, there's one thing I have to say in the creative process is that they only had two days to work on these makeups, so not a lot of time. And there was one point that's going to relate toward me talking about the makeups because of reasons. Because oh dear god, there's reasons. During the pro Michael Rossmore, who, if you don't watch Face Off, he comes in to critique the Face Off contestants' makeup, tell them a little bit of advice to improve their makeup and hopefully win. Uh, he went on Twisted Six's makeup with, since their concept, um, they had like beautiful fairy type characters, and he commented on Jill's makeup that she should fix it because it looks more like veins than anything else. And she was taking a slow time to remove, remove her, the makeup and fix it. And Nick, as the foreman, he wanted to come over and help her fix, show how he did his mix on his makeup to match it. And she was a bitch. She didn't want any of that. And when Nick was tr being the foreman, trying to help, especially with a short amount of time to work on the makeup, they only had one day to make the makeup and, and cast it. That's not a lot of time, especially day two. They have to apply all the makeup. There's not a lot of time in that. You can't just be bitchy about it. So she didn't want to hear it. She storms off and Nick decides to remove all the sculpture off Jill's piece and then showed her what he did so that way she could replicate that. You feel like that's nothing wrong with that. Well, until I get to the end. So I'm gonna start with ethereal effects because they were the very first uh, team to go up. Uh, their concept was they had a elemental tree witch be which a, a husband woodchuck and a, and a wife woodchuck to help her make these houses for woodland creatures and there's one problem. They don't look cohesive as a family. It, it's supposed to be a family challenge. You're supposed to make three members of a family. It's not cohesive. It's weird. They're whimsical, yes, kinda. Uh, I think the best makeup out of them is the woodchuck uh, in the middle, which is the papa woodchuck. I think he's adorable. It's the best woodchuck makeup I've seen, and the makeup on the face was done by Andrew, and he said he's never done a, a little cutesy animal creature because he does a mortal mask. They're all horror type masks, so. This was wonderful piece. It's wonderful, especially because I just look at the woodchuck. I reminded of a uh, oh my god, the woodchuck character from Full House as the puppet. Like that's it looks like a cart like that's the cartoon. This is more what it looks like in a fairy tale setting, and it looks wonderful. The witch, I like the headpiece. The face, it's fine until it has the rosy cheeks that are twisted. It doesn't look right and. I don't see old age, and then the wife woodchuck, oh dear god, like, it, this was, uh, I can't remember her name, this was her first, was one of the contestants, her first face piece, and it shows, especially where she put lipstick on the woodchuck, which is not that hard, it's a female woodchuck, but she put the teeth in, on front of the lips, 
So you could still see the lipstick lips underneath the fake teeth and that's not a good thing. She could have just left space with the teeth, blended in with face makeup and it would have been better. But nope. It just, it doesn't look. It's, I have mixed feelings with this one. It's just, um, I like the middle, the one wood check, because I think it looked good, but overall, they didn't have a cohesive family, but oh dear god, we're not going to get to the results. Dear god, that's going to, you guys are going to be wondering what the hell with me too, so don't fret. Then we have Twisted Six with their concept. They had a family of fairies, where they had a fairy godfather with his daughters. And the fairy godfather is wonderful. Joseph and Casey worked on it. I love the way he did it. They did it. He had the goatee moss, the hair, the profile, the horse. She used magnets to put the tree horns and they are what it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I love it. Nick did the purple fairy, which I loved her. She was beautiful and gorgeous and I like the detail. And then Jill did the younger sister, but the judges commented that she made sags in her eyes. Her edges weren't really good, and I'm just like, yeah, she didn't, she didn't put any all of this channel. It's like she was like a deer in the headlights. She was slow as molasses, and I kind of questioned, is it because from last week where she was the foreman and she was on the bottom? I don't know. It's just weird, and I'm just kind of wondering. Uh, I think this family was cohesive. It was wonderful. And I I think, yeah, we're not done with Jill. Oh dear God, we're not done. Now I'm gonna have to talk more about Jill's makeup because I also remember the judges. They had a guest judge this week who was Elizabeth Mitchell. And apparently I just, she was in a Once Upon a Time Snow Queen. I, yeah, I, I, I knew her being the third Purge film, that's it. The third Purge film, that's all I know her from. I never, I stopped after two episodes of Once Upon a Time and now they're going to reboot. I don't care, let's just talk about Jill's makeup because oh, they're gone. When the judges had her talk about her makeup, she come through Nick under the bus by saying that he tore her whole sculpt off and Glenn asked if this was true. He said next, yeah, Nick said yes and Glenn said, you did the most sacrilegious thing you're not supposed to do in makeup. In my studio, we don't let anyone else touch the sculpture on anyone's makeup. And I just go, I understand that, but Jill was being a bitch. And also Nick was the foreman. He wanted to help with Jill's makeup, especially with the time constraint, because they only had one day to make all the makeup and get everything in the mold room. And Jill walked away. She didn't mention that she walked away as Nick was ripped apart her sculpture. She didn't say that. So she tossed Nick under the bus like that. And you know what happened? Even though I think their makeup actually followed the challenge, they lost to Ethereal Effects. They won. And which, uh, I would say I'm happy that they won. I'm actually more happy that Andrew won on the team because his makeup was very good. And then Casey and Joseph were saved with their makeup along with Phil. But, oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. Nick and Jill are on the bottom. Who gets eliminated? You think Jill, because Jill, Jill's makeup has not been good at all. And it's just... You think she would get eliminated? No, she doesn't get eliminated. Nick gets eliminated because Glenn says that he made a taboo and I'm like, he's the foreman. This is bullshit. He was trying to help her. She didn't want his help. He is... You guys, yes, I screamed bullshit every time. When I heard Nick's name, I'm like, bullshit, bullshit. Bullshit! What the hell? Just because... I mean... It's a ta it, Okay, for anyone who even does special effects makeup, please tell me if for, if one makeup artist rips the sculpt off another makeup artist's work, is that a taboo? Tell me. I would love to know this is an actual taboo in the industry because I don't know, but I feel like if Nick was the foreman and he was trying to help someone fix their makeup that even Michael Westmore said that they needed to fix in the time constraint, 
he should they should be allowed to fix it this is bullshit it, it's just nick should not have been eliminated jill should have been eliminated i don't i'm surprised she's still here like i hope she gets eliminated because like i know reality tv shows like they change how they do it and how they present it like they'll change things like i've learned things from past face off so a couple of people where they they made them in the harsh light but they are generally nice people except for a couple uh and a couple seasons that really are mean but just i can't say if jill's nice or not like the show might have put her in a heart light way but right now like jill should not have actually thrown nick under the bus like that because like Jill's so bad in the makeup. You were a bad woman last week. You're a bad team player this week, Jill. I just want you eliminated next week, and I just don't want to hear from you because right now I think the best people on it on your team are just Joseph, Casey, and Phil. They would be better off without you. Oh, there's nothing wrong to say I don't like Jill. It's just I, I don't like her her team. I don't like her, her team spirit. She seems like she'll be a ta bad teammate on special effects makeup team, that's all. I had a lot to say, I really do. And uh, next week's episode, only caught a glimpse of it because my DVR cut off again. What I gathered, it looks like they have to do four or five makeups now. I saw a lot of horns, and the only thing I heard uh, from Kenzie, Mackenzie, uh, before the recording set off, off, was her saying, welcome to hell. I'm like, oh, they're doing demons. Yay! <laughs> that was the only thing that made me happy at the end. I'm like, yay, demon makeup. I'm happy, but... <laughs> oh my god, this is... I've never been so angry at a face-off episode in quite a long while. Um, I would say there's been maybe a couple of face-off episodes in the past, uh, from a few past seasons that I was angry at. It's just sometimes the judges... Like I said, and the, from season 11, sometimes judges make stupid mistakes. And sometimes the judges aren't always right. Uh, that's all I got to say. Just, this was, oh my god. Yeah. Well, folks, I'll see you all in Face Off Season 12, Divide and Conquer Vlogs, in next week's episode. Later.